Well, it's been a great day today, Adam. Mm -hmm. I've played so much Gaga Ball and played in the stream, had great food. Wasiga is great. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm, I was hoping for is tonight we could go see some stars, but all these clouds have rolled in. I don't know if we're going to be able to. Well, David, at Wasiga 4 H Center, we can actually see the stars even if the clouds come in or even during the day. How does that happen? We have our own blow-up planetarium. Really? Yeah, let's go check out the stars. All right. All right, David, so we just blew up Wasiga's planetarium, and in there, we're going to be able to see the stars and constellations, even if it's cloudy or during the day like today. Oh, wow, this is so cool. I can't wait to go in there. It's really fun. Let's go. So boys and girls, we're in the Wasiga Planetarium, and we will be using these cylinders in front of me to show off the stars and constellations that you can see in our night sky. So I'm going to dim these bright lights, and we're going to tell some of these stories. Here we have Orion in the night sky. Orion was a great hunter and boasted that he could kill every beast on Earth. Now, Gaia, Mother Earth, disapproved of this and sent a giant armored scorpion after him to stop him. The scorpion defeated Orion, and Orion was placed in the heavens with his two hunting dogs, and Scorpio was as well. Here we have Polaris, which is also known as the North Star. Polaris is always visible in our night sky because it's located nearly at the North Celestial Pole, the point at which the entire northern sky turns around. Polaris is also part of Ursa Minor, which can sometimes be hard to find, but can be readily found using the pointer stars from Ursa Major. Ursa Major gets called the Big Dipper a lot, but that is actually an asterism, which is a known grouping of stars. Ursa Major herself is actually much larger than just the Big Dipper. Ursa Major stands for the Big Bear, whereas Ursa Minor stands for the Little Bear. Here we have Cassiopeia, who is the wife of King Cepheus of Ethiopia. Cassiopeia boasted that she was more beautiful than the nymphs of the sea, which angered the king of the sea, Poseidon. Poseidon sent a great sea beast, Cetus, to ravage the coastline. The king and queen consulted the oracle on how they could appease Poseidon, and she said they needed to sacrifice their only daughter, Andromeda. So they strapped Andromeda to a rock out at sea to sacrifice to Cetus. But at the last moment, Perseus flew in and saved her. As punishment, Cassiopeia was placed in a night sky and was condemned to circle the celestial pole forever. Therefore, she spends half the year sitting upright in her throne like a queen and the other half upside down. Wow, Adam, thanks for showing me the starlight. That was really neat, learning about the constellations in there. But since you're such an astronomy whiz, I've got another question for you. Yeah. Okay. So, you see this morning when I walked to the dining hall here at Wasiga, I noticed the moon was up mm -hmm. in the morning. But usually you see the moon at night. And then sometimes, like in movies, there's always a full moon. <laughs> but I don't see that every day. So why is it like this? Well, David, what you're seeing are different phases of the moon. And that's what we call the lunar cycle. And I just had a great idea on how we can show off the lunar cycle, and you can do this at home. All you need is a light, a moon, or any ball will do, and the Earth or yourself is going to be the Earth in this one. So let's take a walk through our lunar cycle and see the different phases of the Moon. So to start off this activity, you're going to want to have the Moon between yourself and your Sun, and you're going to work your way around counterclockwise. Right now we're looking at our new Moon, which during the lunar cycle, this is whenever you won't see the Moon at all that night. And as you move to your left, you're going to see that the Moon starts to light up. That little crescent right there, that is called a waxing crescent. As we move further along, when half the moon is lit up, we're at our first quarter. And as you keep going around, right now, almost the whole moon is lit up, but not all of it, and that is gonna be a waxing gibbous. And as we're moving, we're moving up, 
right there we have a lunar eclipse. That is whenever the moon gets in the Earth's shadow, but they're not very common. So we're going to move it on up out of my shadow and show off that wonderful full moon when you can see all of the moon. And as you keep moving counterclockwise, you're going to see the moon start disappearing. And as the moon disappears, we have our waning gibbous. Coming on a little further, we have our third quarter. And then, whenever we have that crescent again, now it's going to be a waning crescent. And we're back to our new moon. So, we saw some of our stars and our constellations. We talked about the brightest thing in the night sky, our moon. But also, we want to talk about our celestial neighbors the planets and our solar system. And we're gonna start with the thing that's in the middle of our solar system, our sun. In this example, we shrunk down our solar system 10 billion times so we could fit it on the center and walk it. So let's all go for a walk together and learn a little bit about our planets. Let's go. So we just walked all the inner planets in our solar system. And notice how close they were together. Most of them were only two steps apart. So we're going to go check out our outer planets going through the asteroid belt. Hopefully we don't run into any asteroids, but we have some really cool planets to see out there too. Let's go. So we just reached Pluto, which isn't a real planet anymore. It's a dwarf planet, but we have five of those in our system and scientists believe there are more. And David, were you counting all the steps we took in our solar system? Yes, we went 486 steps and I loved it. I want to go to the next solar system like Alpha Centauri. I've never been there, but I always wanted to go there. Well, not a problem, David. It is only 629 miles from where we're standing here, which is about to Washington, D.C. Okay, I'm gonna, let's go, Adam. What? <laughs> Bye. Thank you all so much for joining us and learning a little bit about astronomy. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go catch David.